If you're involved at all with designing and building websites, you've probably heard of the 12 column grid layout system. It's a common design strategy that's used to arrange elements on a web page in a very clean way. If you haven't heard of it, I would recommend watching a video about it and then coming back here. I think these layouts look great and I wanted to build a site like this on my own. But for the life of me, I couldn't find a good guide on how to actually develop these types of websites in a simple and reusable way. This bothered me and would probably bother you too. So I've done the hard yards and created this guide on how to build and develop your own 12 column grid layout website. If you find this video useful at all, I would appreciate a like and or subscribe. I'm a small channel trying to grow and that would help me reach a larger audience. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so here I am in Figma, which is a design tool if you haven't used it. I've gone and created this design using the 12 column grid system. In this frame, we've got the layout grid. You can set it up by adding a layout grid to it and then you can edit it. So in here, you can you can set it to columns. 12, this is the color that shows up. I always set the margins to 20 and the gutter to 20. The additional thing to this, which I add, is I want all my pages to kind of be one screen at a time. When they scroll, they kind of fill the screen. What I do is I have six rows. So just like how we had the 12 columns, you would set it up with six rows. Again, 20 by 20, so it gives the right sizing. Another thing is how you turn on and off the grid. If you're in Figma, it's Shift G we'll turn it on and off. Another key thing that I'll cover is with text. If I highlight this text, you'll see that it's boxed around the letters. There's no extra white space. And I'll show you in this settings here, you have the vertical trim in Figma. You can have it showing the white space or cutting it off. This is something that you wanna do with grid design because it's all about lining everything up. You wanna cut off that extra space so that it's actually using the grid how it should be and using the edges of the text. This is important to remember. Once we get to the developing, I'll show you how to actually do that in CSS. This is the layout and if I turn on the grid, you'll see how it kind of works. We position everything on the grid. It's always using the grid in some way. Some side of it is attached to the grid. This image, for example, it's filling this grid space. Here, we've got this container, which will be this and this, will fill the grid or like sections of the grid. This is where a bit of your creative freedom will come in. Because I use the 20 gutter and spacing between the grid cells, whenever I have like an auto layout part, I will also have the space between as 20 to keep it consistent and then align it to, this one's aligned to the right side of the grid and the top. And then this part here, I did the same. Well, okay, I didn't do the same. I did 10. I did half of what the grid spacing is. It's just a bit of a creative license to do what you think looks good in the context. But I would always keep it as a multiple. This, for example, is half. Something close and consistent. So now that we've covered the design, we'll head over to the finished website so I can show you the final product and then I'll show you how I created it. So here is the finished website. It just looks the same as the design. But if I were to inspect, right click, inspect, and up here, you can select to highlight what everything does. You can see it's like a grid. It's like what we had in Figma. This is where like the magic comes in. Because I've got this grid set up with CSS and styling, I can then arrange it however I want. With this code, you could start a project fresh and just have that grid ready that you can just place what you need where you need it. Another thing I wanna mention is this is completely responsive. This all resizes right down till the tablet this way there's a minimum and a maximum see it won't expand past that and then it'll shrink and then it'll get stuck any device could run this without it being bad that's the luxury of the grid because it's a set layout it's so good for responsive designs it just moves everything where it needs to be all right let's go into the code here we are in the code I might be jumping from here back to the website to show the parts off it's just the hero section here what you put in the grid is really up to you in this video I'm mainly just going to cover that setup and then how you use it you may or may not like the layout I've done so you can just apply what you learn from how I've done it and then put your own elements in there how it's set up is we have a hero section what you'll have to do is just have a div with the grid class name 
and then all of my things are inside that grid. What is that grid? Here we are in the global CSS and that's where you'd want to keep it so that it's accessible from every section in the project so that you can reuse it. I have the height as 100 dvh, which is dynamic view height. It'll set the section to the, the browser height. I like this type of approach because then you can design based off, this is what they'll see. They scroll down to the next section, which is another full page. That's just how I like to do it. Instead of just adding sections down, you can kind of have a bit more control. You have a min height and a max height, and this is to stop it growing too big and shrinking too small. If somebody has like a crazy big monitor, there's a maximum height that it can hit and it keeps it nice and consistent and just stacks the sections. We have a max width of 1440. And that just means that once it starts expanding too wide, it just keeps it in the center nice and clean. Now we actually get into the grid setup. Display as grid, position relative. And I should mention that when you develop, you should develop mobile first. These settings here are for the mobile and down here we have the desktop. And I don't think I actually showed it. Across in here, I have the mobile design of it. And when you do the grid on these, I like to use a four grid across and then six down. And I keep the gutter at 10 pixels instead of 20 because you have less space on the mobile. Here is where we actually set up the grid. We have a grid template columns. We have four by one FR, which just means split it evenly across the space. Then we have the rows, which was six, one FR. Again, this is for mobile, and then I'll cover the desktop after because we develop mobile first. This is where we actually set up the grid and what's put where in the grid. Grid template areas, a dot means it's empty. You keep the top one empty so that the nav bar can go over the top. And obviously you have a sticky nav bar that will stay at the top when you scroll down the page. You can call these whatever you like because you assign the element to these spots. So I've called this call out, which was my big text. CTA is four across, and then the image is four across and four down. Now, if we go back to the design, the call out is four across, the CTA section, which is four across, the image, which is four across and three down. Is that what I have? I have four down, that's actually an error. But if I take that, it will still be the same. But see how in this code, you can kind of visualize the layout just by the words. Padding on the edges is 10 pixels. Inline is actually mainly there just for desktop to keep everything in the center. Here we have our desktop grid layout and it's the same type of thing. You have a min height, a max height. It's just for the growing size, but this is where we have the 12 columns. But we still keep the six rows from the mobile first approach and then we define the new grid template area. We have the call out which is two rows all the way across and if we go to the design we'll see two rows all the way across. We have the image which is three high by five across, three high by five across. We have a space and then we have the CTA kind of like in the middle. Five across, there's a space in the middle and then we have the CTA going pretty much all the way and then the gap and the padding at 20 pixels. That is how you set up the grid. You then apply it to this outside div and you have your elements inside. So if I were to look at this call out container, and this is where we use the CSS inside of each component. And that's all you do. Grid area call out. And that fills out that spot. Image, grid area image. This is just set up grid area CTA. And then you're just applying it to whatever div with the subtext and the button has the CTA. It knows where to put it inside of the grid because you created this grid area. At the beginning of the video, I spoke about the vertical trim on text. What you wanna do on your text elements is put text box trim, trim both, and text box edge, cap alphabetic. And that'll give you that nice layout where you know where the edge of the text is touching the grid. I think it just looks a lot cleaner and it uses the grid better. I should mention though that that is actually an experimental feature in Chrome. Nobody will actually see it until they officially release it, which kind of sucks, but you're prepared for the future. To turn it on, what you have to do is go to the Chrome flags. I'll put the URL here. You have to put the CSS text box trim enabled. I think you have to restart your browser and then you'll see it how you should see it. It's going to come in the future. So I just added in now because it looks better. And then it looks slightly worse with the white space, but there's not much you can do about it until they add the feature. This is the best way to get what you want and get it looking as close to the design as you can. So that's the video on how I'm going to use the 12 column grid layout in my future development. Hopefully this was helpful for you and it will get you started developing using the grid layout. I'd love to know what you think. So if you could leave a comment down below and give me a like or subscribe, that would be greatly appreciated. Thanks for tuning in.